Miss Ascot here. Today I'm going to be reading you The Rascally Cake. Mr Rufus Scumskins o' Parsley wouldn't eat supper unless it was ghastly. Worm cast butties, tubes of glue, pans of slugs in slimy stew, bogey burgers, brown rat roast, fat black tadpoles squashed on toast, washed down with a cup of string. Can you imagine such a thing? One morning, Rufus woke in bed, picked up a pen and scratched his head. I know, he said, I think I'll make an extra special Christmas cake. He smiled and smacked his lips with greed and scribbled down the things he'd need. Ten pounds of flour, six rotten eggs, one hundred hairy spider's legs, some muck, some moths, some mouldy leaves, and several snotty handkerchiefs, a jug of spit, some garden snails, the clippings from his fingernails. He wrote out fifty pages worth of filthy things he could unearth, and then he wrote the recipe. How ghastly could old Parsley be? Far ghastlier, for up he got and rustled up a cooking pot, a reeky, rusty rubbish bin. What else could he put that lot in? Having done that, off he went to find the foul ingredients. Two days later, he came back and grinning like a maniac, put on his apron and his hat and heated up the cooking fat. In went a tramp sock, in went the fleas, in went the scabs from a schoolboy's knees. In went a cowpat, in went mud, in went blubber, the bones and the blood. Soon the pot could hold no more. Horrible blobs bubbled onto the floor. It dribbled and wibbled and spurted and popped. It wobbled and spluttered and splattered and slopped. It coughed and it burped and it tumbled about. And to Rufus's horror began to climb out. Whoops, exclaimed Rufus. I've made a mistake. Something has gone terribly wrong with this cake. I've used too much flour. The fat was too hot. Off flew the dustbin lid. Out the cake got. It started to chase him round cupboards and chairs, then into the hallway and straight up the stairs. Help, cried O'Parsley, then what have I done? Hotly pursued by the man-eating bun. He ran to the bedroom and locked the door tight and hid in the wardrobe and shivered with fright. Under the gap between carpet and door, the rascally cake mixture started to pour. With long spongy fingers and lardy white toes, it searched and it sniffed with its dripping green nose. I've got you, it gurgled and gave him a tweak. And now I shall eat you, keep still and don't squeak. Please do not worry for Rufus's sake. Your sympathy really should lie with the cake. For the cake took one mouthful of Rufus and said, Revolting, disgusting, I'm poisoned, and fled. Where did it go to? Well, nobody knows. The rats wouldn't eat it, and nor would the crows. According to Rufus, it wanders at large, stinking of rubbish and rancid old Marge. Mr O'Parsley decided to change. He doesn't eat anything smelly or strange. Just cucumber sandwiches, lettuce and ham, thinly sliced bread and a spoonful of jam, a lightly boiled egg, the occasional steak, but never, oh never does Rufus eat cake.